current climate, there is a big question as to whether the social and environmental risks of infrastructure projects outweigh the benefits. Looking back at historical projects can help shape views on current discussions, as large Canadian infrastructure projects predate the 1867 formation of the Confederation. Starting in 1812, in an effort to connect Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, Ottawa and the St. Lawrence River, the Welland and Rideau Canals were constructed. Both canals served as important strategic assets and commercial arteries giving life to our young nation. In one of the most ambitious projects in Canadian history, between 1881 and 1885, the Canadian Pacific Railway was built connecting Bonfield, Ontario with Port Moody, British Columbia. The railway has a tarnished image due to massive corruption during its construction and the abhorrent treatment of the workers, especially Chinese labourers. As many as 15,000 Chinese workers were needed, but were given the most dangerous jobs for the lowest pay and inequitable treatment. It is not known how many died during its construction, but the toll is high. On the other hand, the resulting railway gave life to Western Canada. It unified the country, bringing British Columbia into the Confederation and connected the new cities of Winnipeg, Regina and Calgary to the east. It also attracted settlers west, where an abundance of natural resources was discovered, including agriculture, oil and gas across the prairies, potash and uranium deposits in Saskatchewan, and rich forestry and mineral mining in British Columbia. To this day, Western Canada's natural resource abundance enriches the East through billions of dollars in equalization payments and a continuous flow of commodities via the same railways that led to their discoveries. Some of Canada's largest projects are energy projects. Canada's largest hydroelectric project, the James Bay Hydroelectric Plant, was built between 1971 and 1996 in two phases. While environmentalists supported the hydroelectric plant, the Cree nation of northern Quebec stood firmly against it. After several court battles and rulings by the Supreme Court, it was built. Completed, it has the combined capacity to generate 16.5 gigawatts of energy, making it one of the largest hydroelectric dams in history. The socio-economic impacts on James Bay are profound. Failure to adequately consult local and indigenous populations damaged relationships with the government. Further, to develop a reservoir for the dams, an area the size of Belgium was flooded, causing the Cree nation to lose significant hunting and fishing grounds, as well as culturally significant sites. The project also resulted in significant development of local infrastructure, including roads, schools and hospitals. Quebec residents also now benefit from their electricity being the cheapest and greenest in North America. In Ontario, between 1981 and 1993, Scientists and engineers built the Darlington Nuclear Generating Station, which utilizes the Made in Canada CAN-DO nuclear reactor technology. The facility has the capacity to produce 3.5 gigawatts of emission-free electricity, enough to power 20% of the population of Ontario. In 2016, Ontario began a $12.8 billion refurbishment of the plant, which will increase the capacity to 4.8 gigawatts and ensure the production of emissions-free energy until 2055. This will also provide thousands of jobs and an estimated economic benefit of $14.9 billion to Ontario. The energy projects of tomorrow are perhaps even more ambitious. Akin to the Rideau Canal connecting early Canadian waterways, future projects will interconnect continents and forge global relationships. These projects, as with those in the past, contain environmental and social risks that are worth considering. The Site C hydroelectric dam on the Peace River, near Fort St. John, BC, is under construction and is estimated to have a capacity of producing 1.1 gigawatts of electricity, enough to meet 7% of British Columbia's current electricity needs. The Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion is set to triple exports of diluted bitumen to Asia, where it will be largely used to make asphalt for the developing continent and LNG Canada in Kitimat, British Columbia, is billed to be the largest infrastructure project in Canadian history, shipping liquefied methane across the Pacific Ocean to Asia, where it will replace coal consumption and is high in demand. It is unlikely, even with modern labour practices, the Rideau Canal, Canadian Pacific Railway, or James Bay Hydroelectric Plant would be approved by today's legal system, regulatory framework, or moral lens. Reflecting on this, Canadians should ask themselves, were the collective enduring impacts of our infrastructure projects worth it? Perhaps a deeper question is, if previous projects would fail to be approved today, is that a reflection on past projects or on current regulations? <laughs>